Hello, everyone, and welcome to this sneak peek webinar about the Harm, Healing, and Human Dignity Conference that's happening October 27th, 29th, and 31st. We're so glad you are here today. Our hope was to give you a taste of the conference and all that's happening in those three packed days at the end of this month. So thank you for being here. You might be here today because you're curious about the conference and you wanna learn more about restorative justice. Or maybe you're here because you're discerning if a three-day virtual conference is right for you and your ministry team. Or maybe you've already registered for the conference and you're eager to get these conversations started. However you arrive, we're glad that you're here. It's gonna be 30 minutes of a packed um, conversation about what we're most excited about for the Harm, Healing, and Human Dignity Conference. So I'd love to introduce the conference planners who are gonna be presenting to you today. Slide, please. Um, so first we have Sean Horrigan, who is the Director of University Centers and Staff Development at the University of San Diego. He serves on the leadership team for the Restorative Justice Network of Catholic Campuses, and he's a Restorative Justice Facilitator and trainer at the Center for Restorative Ju Justice at USD. We have Fred Lapuza, who's the director for the Office of Restorative Justice in the Catholic Diocese of Orange, California. Fred has been ministering to incarcerated populations in Orange County jails and juvenile detention facilities for the past 32 years. We have Sister Ilaria Buonraposi, who's a, an Italian Camboni missionary sister. She has a master in restorative justice from Eastern Mennonite University. Sister Ilaria also ministered for 17 years in Peru and Colombia during some of the most turbulent times in those countries' histories. And we have Caitlin Morneau, who is the Director for Restorative Justice at Catholic Mobilizing Network. She's the lead adapter of CMN's Faith Formation Guide Harm, Healing, and Human Dignity, a Catholic Encounter with Restorative Justice. Caitlin has a Master in Conflict Transformation from Eastern Mennonite University. We're so excited that you're here and we're, we're delighted to share with you what is in store for the Harm, Healing, and Human Dignity Conference. Just a couple things before we begin. Um, please feel free to use the chat if you have questions. We have Leslie Willis and Caitlin Tully who are on the CMN team and they're in the background answering your questions and helping with tech. Although we're not gonna have a live question and answer back and forth, if you have questions along the way, they can help you and we're here to do that for you. So let us begin. Um, we're just gonna go through a couple questions and we're gonna uh, get a sense of what all is in store. So from your seat in Catholic ministry, why is hosting the Harm, Healing, and Human Dignity Conference important to you? Sean, let's start with you. And thank you, Christiane. Hi, everyone, and, and welcome to the webinar. Really excited to, to see you uh, participate in the conference and hopefully meet you virtually throughout. Uh, you, you know, I've been so excited for this conference uh, for some time. Uh, obviously, pre-COVID, we had hoped to meet in person, and this opportunity to engage virtually is just a blessing. Um, I think it's timely too, as we think about the movement around restorative justice, it's broad and so many people are joining this movement from various contexts, uh, from education and criminal justice, community-based uh, and diocesan uh, organizations. And I just have come to believe that Catholic uh, organizations and members of the Catholic Church have such a unique offering uh, to this movement. Uh, we can speak profoundly with our values and our principles, and we can bring them to bear on the movement. And I think the movement has something uh, to benefit from uh, in our Catholic social teachings. Uh, so I'm particularly excited to, uh, to come together and have conversation about that, to dialogue around how do we leverage our values, our principles, our teachings in this movement? How do we share it beyond the Catholic community, 
And then how do we join together and collaborate from our respective parts of the movement in order to advance it? Uh, so uh, again, really excited to be joining this, this effort and to see you during this conference. Uh, Fred, how about you? What are you excited about uh, with the Harm Healing and Human Dignity Conference? I, I definitely uh, echo what you just said. Um, it's, it's very exciting. Um, happy to be with you all today and look forward to seeing you in the workshops coming up. Um, yeah, for me, um, this is uh, one of the things in some of the conversations I've had with people about restorative justice. In some ways, it's one of the best kept secrets. Uh, so it's, it's kind of out there, but it's oftentimes people don't know about it, or sometimes it's, uh, it's something they might even be, you might even be practicing and not even know that you're, you're practicing it, or you somehow experienced it in some way. So I think this conference is going to be a really great way where we can articulate it better, we can identify it, make it a little more concrete, um, especially in practice. Uh, so really hopefully that, that, uh, that people get something out of this conference that's meaningful to them, uh, as, it is, as it is to me right now. I work with, uh, they mentioned I work with incarcerated populations. Uh, I see a lot of hurt and pain uh, and a lot of hopelessness. Uh, and, and I think that this population is a symptom of some, some stuff going on in our society or a lot of things going on in our society. So anything that uh, we can do to uh, really identify that uh, and start working uh, towards um, not only healing uh, those that we come in contact with or hurt, but just as, as a society and, and as a nation. So it's exciting to be with everybody from all these different places. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. How about you, Sister Ilaria? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here today. And I, I've, been, I've been participating in all this meeting in preparation of this conference. And finally, he's here. Is a couple of weeks away. And uh, I'm excited about it because I do really believe that uh, the values that are embedded in uh, restorative justice, like respect, responsibility, restoration, healing, accountability, these values are scattered uh, inside our Catholic social teaching. Mm. And they are part of it. And uh, when these values are seen together, they complement each other and they are powerful instruments to foster healthy communities and dignifying, dignifying relationships. And uh, I do believe that restorative justice and Catholic social teaching together can help communities to heal. So my hope is to introduce the perspective offered by restorative justice as an overarching back, background to our ministries. Beautiful. And Caitlin, who I have the joy of working very closely with at Catholic Mobilizing. Thanks, Chrisanne. Thanks so much to all of my, my our co-planners and everyone on the line with us. And also I wanna give a shout out to one of our co-planners who wasn't able to be on the line this afternoon, Bobby Eno from the Diocese of San Diego, one of our, our co-collaborators on this conference along with the Restorative Justice Center at University of San Diego. Um, and knowing that he's here with us in spirit as well. And, Words can't quite describe how elated I am for this gathering that's been, you know, as Sean mentioned, a, a dream and in the works for um, it's like oh, over a year now. And it may look different than we initially imagined last summer, but just so amazed at how many individuals, groups, leaders from the grassroots to, um, to the, the grass tops are coming together around this necessary work and ministry of healing in our nation and responding to harm and injustice in ways that are, are centering human dignity and relationships. And so the work that we've been doing at Catholic Mobilizing Network to engage and learn together as a community through formation and network building and story sharing really all culminate 
in this collective experience. And so, as I mentioned, you know, at Catholic Mobilizing Network, we've been watching this awareness and engagement grow with restorative justice in really exciting ways across the country. And there's so much wisdom and experience to be shared in ways that, as Sean and Fred mentioned too, that, that cross-pollinate between ministry areas and across geographies. And to do this in a virtual space really, really allows us to, to do that in, a, in really creative ways and exciting ways, even though we can't be physically together. And, you know, it was such a gift last weekend, I guess, when, um, when Fratelli Tutti, the Pope Francis's newest encyclical was released and to read and just soak up these prophetic and timely messages of solidarity and justice, truth-telling, memory, and reconciliation that we know are so central to, as Alaria mentioned, who we are as Catholics and our identity, who we're called to be, not only as people of faith, but as a human family. And so to have the, the gift of his message and encouragement behind and with us is just truly a blessing. And the last thing I'll say is that I think this conference reminds us that we are not alone in this ministry and work, that as Catholics, as parts of this growing national restorative justice movement, and as a human family, we, we can foster relationship -centered, a relationship-centered culture and healing responses to harm and injustice. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, why don't we just take a second um, so we can, uh, before we go to the next question, uh, it's a chance for the participants, which we have almost 100 folks. Um, if you are able to locate the chat at the bottom of your screen, um, why don't you just tell us where you're kind of zooming in from today? We'd love to know. You can just pop that right in there. And while you're doing that, while you're finding that chat function at the bottom, um, also there's been a couple of uh, things that people have noted. And I'd love to see that someone said, please don't think that this conference is anything less than since it's virtual because I wouldn't have been able to come if it wasn't virtual. And we feel the same way. We feel like it's been um, really exciting to, uh, to have this delivery that is just so much more accessible for so many more. Um, let's see, we had Vic who mentioned um, his in interest in the clergy sex uh, abuse scandal uh, panel. And that is uh, definitely something that we're very eager to break open and share with you. Um, and let's see, we had someone else mention the power of restorative justice and in, in its practices. We've got folks coming in from, uh, wow, San Diego County District Attorney, welcome. We've got folks from Richmond, Columbus, PA. We've got Vermont, Lansing, Michigan, New York. Wow, you're coming in from all over. So exciting. Oh, wow. Lots of sisters I see from the St. Joseph sisters. Welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is great. Public Clara Assembly. from the Seward Center. I was just there, <laughs> Clara. Um, Pat Delgado. Hi, Pat. Oh, great. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So our next question is um, for our panelists is how would you describe your hope? I think we've gotten a little bit of a glimpse of your passion for this issue and how it fits in your ministry. But what is your hope in this conference for your ministry and also for the church? And I think Alaria will start with you. You're on mute, Alaria. Again, again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> My hope is that uh, we can, uh, in this conference where we are going to be a lot of people coming from different backgrounds, we can, and there are going to be people who is already familiar with restorative justice and people for whom restorative justice principles and practices are quite new. Uh, together, we can create like a Catholic language 
for restorative justice and to implement in a creative way uh, restorative justice practices in our ministries. There are already many Catholic ministries that are imprinted on restorative justice, but I would like to see more of them because um, they have a, a huge impact on parishes, schools, families, movements, and for peace building. And I do believe that uh, if we implement more uh, restorative justice practices, uh, both the society and our church will benefit of it. No doubt, no doubt. How about you, Sean? Oh, um, you know, I think whenever I engage or support others engaging in a conference or an educational learning experience, my, my hope tends to stay the same, which is that you take from it exactly what you need. What, you know, what do you need for your next step? Uh, as Sister Ilaria shared, we're all on a journey with regards to restorative justice. Some of us are, are just starting. Some of us are pushing through different challenges right now. And the needs are different to use sort of a, a restorative word. Um, and I hope that your needs are met in this conference. I think uh, the conference represents at least in my experience, uh, an amazing experiment in terms of being virtual and taking a relationship oriented experience and process and taking it virtual. And I think that we'll find that even in this virtual space, we can connect, we can forge relationships, we can collaborate, find partnerships, uh, cr start to create new ideas. Um, and I, I am uh, extremely hopeful that we will be successful in that endeavor and that the movement of restorative justice that expands the globe and across faiths and contexts will be better off as a result uh, of this conference and, uh, and that we'll each be a little more prepared to take up our small space within that movement uh, and know that there are so many others out there that are pushing it along with us. So, uh, because there are some dark days in this work, there are some there are some real challenges, and to know that there's a community out there that's in it in the, in it with you is um, it's just it's a helpful reminder. And I leave these types of experiences often um, inspired by the work of others, and I am certain I will find that in this conference. Yeah, we're we're there to do what is ours to do. I think that's a perfect uh, platform for us to, to think about those things for, for moving forward. Thank you, Sean. How about you, Caitlin? What's your hope? Hmm. Well, echoing so much of what Sister Ilaria and Sean already mentioned that basically no matter where someone comes from or, or how they arrive in this space with us in your learning journey, that you can come away feeling like you've absorbed, integrated something new that can be applied. And, and you know, we're, we're thinking and talking a lot, especially about our, our ministry areas and, and educational settings, but just want to name and call out that this is also about transforming our systems, transforming our culture, and bringing this to, to our homes and our everyday lives. And making uh, this way of, of being in relationship our, our, our norm across, um, across relationships at whatever level those may be, uh, if that makes sense. And for us to, for what we take away to be both about the practical and, and the hands-on and also about the bigger, the big picture questions and challenging ideas and how we're able to, to wrestle with those as we move both in, within the conference space and with one another and as we go forward and bring this message back to our communities and our families, our institutions and our systems. So one of the things that we we've talked about a bit and I really hope is that as individuals and as a community, we can further cultivate and 
share some of the unique gifts that the Catholic tradition and ministry lends to, as, as Sean mentioned, the restorative justice movement and restorative justice practices across the United States. Thank you, Caitlin. And Fred. You know, my hope uh, for the ministry is that uh, people, uh, again, find something meaningful from it that you go away. I mean, I've been to a lot of conferences in my 32 plus years of doing ministry. And a lot of times you can go to them and you can walk away and not uh, do anything with that, or there's nothing that, that follows after that for you. So that's, so my hope is that there's something you can take away from this and take back with you and use. Um, I found that restorative justice is a very good fit for our Catholic beliefs, especially our Catholic social teaching. Um, and, and what I find too is sometimes people don't even know about Catholic social teaching. So if there's anybody out there who doesn't, I hope this is a place they can find out about it. No and doubt. All that implies. So maybe we, with some folks, we're just going to need to start there. Uh, Laria mentioned that people are going to come from, from uh, different uh, thresholds of their faith uh, or places that they're in. And they're, so it's going to, it's going to be a different experience for everybody, which I think is great. Uh, wherever you're at, whatever place you're in, um, that you'll be able to go from this conference and take it out and be able to do something with it. And whatever you do with it, um, at least from what I experienced, is lives will be changed. And um, remember, every time we change a life, it's not just that life that gets changed. It's the other lives that are around that life. It's usually not one person, but it's their family, their friends, community, uh, maybe their enemies, uh, from the victims to the offenders, uh, from law enforcement to everybody in between is impacted by the effects of restorative justice. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm hoping that somehow or another that's an experience that y'all can take back. And, um, you know, we can, we can start changing the country right now after this, so. Agreed, agreed. Well, I just wanted to say, I was kind of looking through the chat too as we were talking and um, I saw that we have folks not only from all across the United States, but we have folks from as far as Australia and Ottawa, Canada. So uh, this is a quite an interesting, uh, even international crowd. So this is just so exciting. And that's part of the, the grace and um, opportunity with the virtual setting. Um, so just to get kind of through the last couple things, um, you've heard a lot about the hopes and the, and the reasoning behind the conference, but now looking at the specifics, who, um, who is gonna be talking, what people are gonna be talking about, who are the, the two folks, people that you're, or conference speakers or panels that you're most interested in? Um, just give us your sneak peek of who, uh, who you're really curious to hear from. Um, who would like to start? I can go first and I confess that I'm cheating a little bit because I'm gonna name groups of people, but they're speaking together. <laughs> um, and, and I feel like I could name every single one of our speakers here, but um, I, I will just highlight one of our evening offerings, uh, evening for the East Coast, uh, will be with a group of folks who were involved in creating the documentary, The Prison Within. And there's information on the conference website about how you can view this documentary before the conference. We invite and really encourage you to do that. It's an amazing uh, just lens into what these restorative practices and trauma healing processes can look like inside of prison. And uh, some folks from the cast of the documentary, as well as director of of the Insight Prison Project, who's a Catholic himself and just incredibly inspirational, and the filmmakers will be uh, coming together for a discussion with you all about the film. So I encourage you to watch that in advance and join us for that discussion. And the, the other that Im immediately came to mind was the incredible story that we're going to hear from uh, the Gromer and McBride families, along with their facilitator, Sujatha Baliga, and, amazing leader in this field and the process that they went together, went through together as families after, um, after Anne was killed by Connor in 2010. Um, so please, you know, I'm, these are, it's just tidbits, but I, I hope that you will join us for these and, and all of our amazing speakers. Great, thank you. How about you, Fred? 
Oh, boy, I was sharing with the group earlier here that uh, how difficult it was to say which one my favorite one was. Um, uh, and I had, a, I had a couple, but uh, probably historical harms and reparations. Um, uh, you know, Caitlin had mentioned earlier about uh, how there, the systemic issues that we need to deal with, uh, that there's, there's a culture out there uh, oftentimes that um, wants to use sometimes uh, punitive or even sometimes violent ways of how things are dealt with, which is not what restorative justice does. Uh, so, it, and I mentioned too that there's, um, uh, you know, the, a lot of the people that I work with uh, as well, there's usually reasons that they're acting out the way, the way they are. There's usually a history there. Um, so there's a history from each individual and there's also a history from us collectively as a nation, as a world, however we want to look at it. Uh, and I think we really need to look into that and we need to know, you know, I always ask the, the question, you know, why are people harming people? You know, why a, a little baby doesn't just get born one day and decide that they're gonna go out and harm people. Something happened maybe along the way. And, um, and, and oftentimes there are uh, larger things that, that's, that, that's happening um, through genocide or other types of uh, larger issues. Some of these things are hard to look at, to talk about, um, you know, to even, to even want to think about, but we really need to break those open and we need to talk about that and look at it because it happens not only on a large scale, but also on an individual scale and smaller scales. So I th think that's the one I'm, I'm looking most forward to see what I can learn from that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Sean, how about you? Um, well, it's similar. It's a tough one. I, uh, I think this is a really an all star kind of lineup. There are just some really amazing, not just from the keynotes, but uh, the individual workshops are also just really impressive and cut across a, a number of different contexts. I want to build on what Fred was sharing, which is, you know, for some of you will know about the tension in the restorative justice movement. Uh, where we become more focused on individuals and single incidents, and we don't often lift up the systemic and the historical trauma that has, is continuing to occur. And I, uh, so one speaker who I think just does a brilliant job uh, of dissecting this for us is Danielle Sered. And I am very much looking forward to seeing her speak. Um, if you don't know Danielle, uh, she recently authored a book called Until We Reckon, uh, it's a, one I would highly recommend. I think it changed a lot of the ways in which I approach restorative justice and my understanding of our just of our current justice system and uh, and what it does um, uh, to people, in particular communities of color, uh, historically and currently. Uh, I think uh, so. We have a certificate program in restorative justice here at the University of San Diego, and that is a core text that we use. And even if students are not in working in the criminal justice system to understand that system and how restorative justice can help intervene in that system and create change at the systemic level, which is something as practitioners of, of restorative justice, we need to continually be mindful of. Uh, we do great work individually and with single incidents, but if we're not trying to address the systemic uh, challenges in, in, in our society, then, um, then we're, we're stopping short of the potential. Uh, so Danielle Soret is, is, is clearly one that I would highly encourage everyone to visit and check out our book. The other one, I mean, I'm just, not just because he's a close friend of mine, but David Karp uh, here at the University of San Diego, I think does some, uh, does some wonderful work. Scholarly has, has brought restorative justice into the mainstream within higher education. Um, and I think that higher education is just a critical context in which we start to use restorative justice more and more. Because I believe that the, the students in higher ed are, are leaders of tomorrow. And if we can start to expose them to restorative justice principles and values while they're in college or in university, then when they leave, they're more likely to experience the world, to engage the world restoratively. And uh, I think that's one of my, core to my mission as an educator um, is, to, is to do that kind of work. And I think David speaks well to that current movement and why it's important in the broader movement of restorative justice. Thank you, Sean. How about you, Laria? Who are you thinking uh, about? I'm thinking in Howard Zare. He is uh, the one 
the, one of the first one in the US that started to um, put in together the collective wisdom and knowledge about the restorative justice. And he is known as the grandfather of restorative justice because he's in the field since the 1970s. And uh, he, one of, he's a prolific writer, but one of his books, uh, Changing Lens, uh, gave me a very different perspective and meaning to transformative experiences that I had in the past in my life while especially those that I had in South America. And uh, so I, I heard him speaking several times and I never get tired of it. So I really am looking forward to it. And the other one is uh, Father Greg Boyle. He's a um, Jesuit from Los Angeles, living in Los Angeles. And that um, he took a, a very incredible approach to gang members, they, which the incredible thing that he treats them like human being. Mm. And he respects their um, dignity and their um, holiness. So 30 years ago, he founded Homeboys Industries to employ and train former gang members. And uh, uh, in a smaller scale, I have a similar experience with former gang gang members in Colombia. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'm looking forward to hear from you. Yes, yes. Well, these are all incredible speakers and topics and we can't wait to engage them. We're gonna move uh, really quickly. We're at time, but we do have a couple more things. So if you can hang on the line just for a second, we want to give you some um, practical information. Um, registration has been extended. So please, uh, if you haven't already registered, register today. It's open till October 22nd, next Thursday. So there's a little time to work with. Because you came um, to this sneak peek webinar, we wanna offer you a discount. Um, seems only fair. So if you um, register on the website, and Leslie has put that in the chat for you, you can click right there. You can go to catholicsmobilizing.org and it's right on our, our homepage as well. But when it gets to the point where you're registering and you're, um, and you're going to pay, just put in sneak peek for that 20% off. We still have scholarships available and we do wanna make group rates still available. We have a number of delegations of ministries from all over the country coming. And the only requisite is that your group has three people or more, and then it will be, instead of the $99 per person, it will be $35 per person. And you can check on the website uh, and kind of walk through the process to, to get hooked up with the group, uh, group rates as well. Um, so I think, I think we're about it, um, about there. I think there was a couple more questions. Let me just be sure. Um, I know someone asked about the prison within, Doug. You can watch it on any number of streaming uh, platforms, the prison within, and you can also contact us for more information. But um, if you click on the place in the website where it talks about the movie, um, you can see which platforms are hosting the film and it's definitely worthwhile seeing. Um, we are so glad that you are here. We thank you for your time. We hope to see you on October 27th. Let us know if we can help you in any way. Um, and we really do hope you'll join us. Thanks to these wonderful panelists and hope to see you all soon. Thank you, bye. Take care.